today we're going to be taking a look at a Pioneer SX 780. Now if you're thinking, didn't you do one of these already? You're thinking of my 424 here. And while I did do a restoration video on this one, uh, the 780 is a whole nother beast. On top of being a wildly better receiver, this is also going to be a much bigger challenge to get working. The 424 really just needed the knobs cleaned, it wasn't a big deal. This one has some serious problems. Now while this thing will turn on, I don't quite want to do that right now, and when we get inside I'll show you why. So let's just take a brief look at what makes this thing special. Now unlike the 424, which has a black face along the front and is backlit with a blue tint, this just has everything out in the open for you to see all the time. And it has the usual extremely satisfying weighted tuning knob. We have dual VU meters and we have an AM FM signal strength indicator. The 424 just has the tuning information and the signal strength indicator. We also have an assortment of push buttons and knobs and switches on the front that allow us to select sources and configure this however we need. Now these are just beyond satisfying to use. These spring-loaded switches, oh they're wonderful. The volume and you know, selector switches here, they're not terrific, but they're fine. This is just this weighted tuning knob really blows everything else out of the water. Now on the back there's not too terribly much going on. Let me get the AM antenna moved out of the way here. We have the other antenna connectors here. We have the dual zone speaker terminals here. And then we have the inputs for the unit here. Note if you're not familiar with these types of things, these are outputs for the tape decks. So these are not more inputs. One of the big ooh and ah points of this model is the wattage output. Now it's rated for 45 watts per channel, but those are 70s watts and are rather conservatively rated. Not that you want that much power behind your music, this is easily enough to make you go deaf at a close distance. After removing the four screws on the side, we can slide the case back, lift it up, and pull it out of the way. And now we can take a good look at the interior. Now when I first got this thing, I was having a heck of a time trying to figure out why it wasn't working. It's pretty clearly filthy inside and I suspect it was rained on. This area is just covered with fluff and debris and dust and and this area looks a lot better down here so I was suspecting something over here but this is for the inputs here and the tuning and I don't get anything out of it. So I started to look around this area and still didn't quite find anything that looked wrong. I was usually I was mostly suspecting capacitors might be bad and it took me a long time to figure out what the problem most likely is. Now let's see if you can figure it out just by looking at this and I'll give you a couple hints along the way. So let's just take a few seconds and look it over. Okay it's not on this board. If you're familiar with this, it's not the Darlington transistors underneath that you can't see here. It's not on this side. It's probably not the relay. Someone has replaced that. Did you get it? Somebody was monkeying around in here and removed a transistor. Ah, oh, good, I think I found what was making my images look soft. There's a big smudge on the inside of the lens. I swap these around a lot, so that doesn't surprise me. Now, a significant portion of the time when you have a Pioneer receiver like this, the relay is going to have gone bad, and someone has replaced that relay already. That doesn't mean that I trust that relay, or their soldering job, or any number of factors. Uh, so we'll look into possibly replacing that, if this doesn't pan out. But this is clearly a problem. Now, after removing all the screws and pulling off the bottom, we can get a look at what this looks like from the underside. Now, if we take a look at the bottom side of the relay where someone's already had it go, we can see all kinds of scratches in the solder mask. And they were probably using a giant, heavy, high-powered soldering iron to remove this. More like a soldering gun. Over here, it's the same story for the transistor. And luckily, it looks like none of the pads were lifted on that. So I'm hoping I can just put a new transistor in there and have this thing work. 
And herein lies why this video feels a bit unusual, because I've already gone ahead and placed a Mauser order for all three transistors here, actually, and a new relay, because I didn't want to have this be a multi-parter. So now that I'm armed with this, the transistor that should go here, the video should feel a little bit more inclusive. Now, while I did order the transistor to put on there, I do have still a little wild card. All three of these transistors should have these heat sinks on them. Now, the chances of me being able to find this exact heat sink are so low that I didn't even bother to try. Instead, I'm going to go to my parts bin and hope that I can find one that will clear this area. It's pretty large, so I don't think it'll be too big of an issue. I've seen a lot of people mod this to put a bigger heat sink on that particular transistor anyway, so I think I'm going to make an improvement overall. Alright, looking around at what I've got, I'd love to be able to use this big, thick one, but it is not going to fit without hitting those ceramic resistors and definitely going to short against that wire wrap point. Something else with a large thermal mass would be this one, which could attach like that, but doesn't make a good connection on the back of the part. I could go with this one, which would fit fairly far down, is much bigger, and is a pretty good connection. But I think I could do a little better if I throw one of these on the back of it, which would give it some wings that go around the resistors and past the wire wrap points. So we're going to go with combining the two of these to make one larger heatsink. Is it lazy if I don't want to find a bolt to hold these all together? Or is it smart because I want to solder them, which would mean it connects better thermally? Hmm. Thank you, Anet, for supplying an oddly overkill number of nuts and bolts for a cheap 3D printer. Now, if I try and put this in here with all those heat sinks stacked on top of each other, I find that this wire wrapping post closest to it is in the way. So, I'm going to have to remove this fin. I think I can get away with just bending this fin in a little bit. Let's see if that clears now. Oh, it's perfect. This is going to be a bit overkill, but I'm going to use some Cooler Master uh, CPU thermal paste on this stuff. Just because, well, I don't want to have any uh, possible problems with this. That was the wrong part. <laughs> this is nowhere near as critical as a CPU, so... I can be pretty lax with my application here. Really, this is just the only thermal paste I have. A regular old thermal grease would be a little more appropriate here than a higher cost CPU product. But hey, it's what I got. All right, I've got the unit up on its side now, so let's go ahead and tack that in place. All right. I think we're ready to try turning it on again. All right, let's see. So this is what I expected before. If I dim one of my lights here, you can see that the lights are on inside the unit. So now let's see if I go to AM and walk through if I get any signal. I am not getting anything, huh? All right, then. I would expect to receive at least something, so that may not be the only problem that there is. One thing we need to do is hear this relay click, so let's see if it does that when we turn it on. I did not hear that relay. Okay, so we've got no relay, no signal, and still no audio output. So we're still basically failing all over. So let's go to the schematic and take a look at what could be going wrong here. Let's start with the transistor we just put in, Q25. Now, we power this back up, and we measure the collector here, which, as we can see, is the middle pin. 
we're getting 50 volts. That's a lot more than the 25 that we should be seeing. Um, which means that everything else that would be coming out of that transistor would be wrong. So let's go to Q19 because that's connected to this line right here and see what that gets us. So coming out of Q19's base should be about 40 volts. And we're seeing 49. That's still not quite right. So what else is connected to this? Um, we have D4, which where does D4 connect to? Where does that scamper off to become? Oh, that just goes all over. Looks like D4 is connected into ground, yes. So that should be ground on one side. Okay, so let's see what D4 measures as. Uh, now, looking around on here, it's kind of hard to figure out which one's D4, but I'm pretty sure I've determined it. On the other side, there is silk screen on the uh, plain side of the PCB, and it's got a squiggle on it because it's a special diode. So that's the only one in that area that's look, that looks like that, and we have two transistors connected to it, and there's two transistors connected to that. And if you measure that, we get ground on one side, and ground on the other side, when we should be seeing 14 volts. Hmm. Let's turn this off, switch to a continuity test. That looks like the diode is fried. Let's see what that looks like on the other side. All right, so right next to those transistors right here, we can see D4. And again, this board doesn't have any reference designators on it, which is unfortunate, but whatever. Um, so if we connect to one side and the other, we register a short. So let's pull that out and see if the part's bad or if the connections are shorted somewhere else. There's the diode. Okay, so here we have that Zener diode pulled, and that thing's dead. Yeah, so that's a problem. Forgive me channeling my inner Draga 1 here, giving you a shot that's literally just off screen, but we need a replacement for the Zener diode for D4. Now, since this is a Zener diode, it should allow voltage past a certain point, and since the voltage here is supposed to be 14, this should be a 14 volt Zener diode. So, I'm off to see if I can locally source a 14 volt Zener diode. All right, a quick trip to the local electronics dealer, and I have diodes. Now, I suspect the one I pulled out of there was indeed a half watt but I'm not sure, so I also bought some 5 watt ones just so I can have all the options I could possibly need. So I don't want to have to go back out for this, another one of these. So, there we go. There's definitely no messing the orientation up with that kind of silk screen. Got a cable conveniently perfectly in the way here, but the diode is in place. And that is attached. Go ahead and snip those off and then try powering it up again. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, we got, I have signal. Look at that, that's moving. The source is lit up. Tape monitor, oh man. Oh man. All right, <laughs> we're, we're real close now. All right, just one little quick test before we connect some speakers to it and fry them. Let's make sure there's no DC offset on this thing. Oh, that relay clicking, yeah. Um, I don't think that's a problem. Yeah, pretty sure we're good. All right, let's start hooking up some speakers. All right, I've got some cheapo Sony's connected to channel A that I won't lose any sleep over if they get fried. So let's try this out. Let's go FM. 
and let's see. I don't have an FM antenna hooked up. We'll go AM. Oh man. We have sound. All right, let's give it a real source. Oh yeah. That is a satisfying feeling. Oh man. Oh man, I'm happy. Well, I think that about wraps it up for the SX780 here. Uh, that is fully repaired so far as I can tell. And that's just awesome. Now, interestingly, I bought this secondhand uh, on Craigslist, and I'm pretty sure he bought it at Goodwill, and that means that two different people had this thing and it was broken, and all that was holding it back was a tiny little diode. That was the only real problem. The second guy probably had no idea that the uh, transistor was missing from this thing. I bet the first person was going to work on this and then just didn't end up finishing it, because wow. Uh, yeah, it really didn't take a lot, obviously, to get it going. Well, I hope that was entertaining, because I sure had a lot of fun doing this. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.